there's something I have to share with you. You won't want to miss this. I just ate a banana. And do you know what else? I have a blister on my toe. Do you want to see it? I have pictures. I've just posted them on Facebook. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Seriously, isn't there more we can do with social media than bore people silly? We have... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> We have an incredible opportunity in this digital space. We can connect with up to two billion people. As a journalist, that's an amazing audience. Just think about the scope we have to change the world for the better. Yet so many of us are caught up in our own importance. It's almost as if we forget that social media is real life and it matters. So what about being authentic? Well, take a look at these identities. One belongs to a 20-year-old who has forged a career out of photographing her backside. <laughs> I wish I'd thought of that. Another is a public relations director, if you can believe that. She lost her job after posting this on Twitter. She says she was joking and a school leaver <laughs> whose career is yet to begin. <laughs> so tell me, do you think these identities are authentic? Hands up. Yes? No? Who's unsure? A lot of unsures. Well, they are authentic. It's just a pity that we judge them on these snapshots. You see, there is more to you than what you post. And today, I want you to think about three things. Firstly, what it means to be authentic. Secondly, how social media can shape your identity. And thirdly, how you can be true to your values and use social media for the greater good. Because it's not just about me, it's about we in our global space. So what does it mean to be authentic? Well, it's being real or true. What's real for me at 18 may not be real for me now, and that's okay. In fact, it can even be a really good thing <laughs> because identity changes over time. It shifts. So does our personality. As we change jobs or our marital status changes, so do we. Even the online Scammers and frauds and bullies, they too are authentic in being really and truly themselves. Sure, the facts may be phony, but the choice to publish is a reflection of who they are. So it's not that my online identity is inauthentic, it's just incomplete. It's a bit like taking something someone says out of context. Yet that incomplete me is out there permanently, and it's being used. Nine in 10 employers check Facebook accounts. Businesses profile you from the clues you leave when you share opinion, seek information, shop. Sometimes they even get it right. eBay knows, I need more shoes. <laughs> so you see, social media is a two-way street. And now that we know we are naturally shape-shifters and that shape is authentic, have you thought about how social media is shaping you? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and all the rest manipulate our age-old desires to be popular, attractive, to improve social standing. I can like, favourite, friend, follow, update status and use filters to make photos more flattering. Fantastic! And I get to share things that are special to me with the people I love. Where's the harm in that? Well, it's easy to get carried away. Research shows that the people most active on social media are also the most interested in personal visibility and becoming famous. Think narcissism and exhibitionism. 
the more I focus on my selfie, the less I attend to the needs and concerns of others, and my empathy declines. Recall the tweet from the PR director. No empathy there. Plenty of visibility, though. Social media invites me to comment on everything and everyone. Not a problem. I live in a democracy. I can spew out whatever I like. Well, this part of my authentic self used to be kept in a private space. Anthropologist Irving Goffman called it backstage relaxation, a place where we could swear, wear slightly inappropriate clothes, become, as he said, a trifle overheated in argument, and engage in minor physical self-involvements such as belching and flatulence. It's not backstage anymore, it's all out there. But hey, relax. Facebook co-founder Mark Zuckerberg, the $25 billion man, tells us that eventually people will accept that we all do inappropriate things. They'll dismiss the racist jokes, the sexist remarks, the photos you never thought would be shared. Really? Just last month in New South Wales, a former student was ordered to pay $105,000 to a teacher he defamed on Twitter and Facebook two years ago. So it might be in Zuckerberg's interest for you to overshare, but it is not in yours. Because when your whole world becomes the online self, you are allowing narcissism and exhibitionism to take over. Your sense of self can shrink to what you post. Everything else is irrelevant. And the younger you start, the more likely it is that social media will stop you from realising something really important. And that is, you are not the centre of the universe. Teenagers have told researchers that without social media, they have no life. You were born and then you joined Facebook. <laughs> well, my life began in 2008. How about yours? <laughs> Your online self is only a fraction of who you are at any given time. And you sell yourself short if you act otherwise. And you limit what you can give to the community. Because it's not just about me, it's about we. As we developed over time, we moved from living in nomadic family groups, we settled into larger communities. So that basic human instinct to survive broadened from me to we. In the 21st century, when globalisation and technology have torn down geographical, cultural and economic boundaries, how much more important it is to consider we. Think of the challenges we are facing right now. They're enormous. Terrorism, superbugs, water distribution, a widening gap between rich and poor. What we need are solutions from independent, creative thinkers. Yet Harvard psychologist Robert Keegan says, the majority of us conform without thinking to social norms. Others are egocentric, never outgrowing childhood. Think road rage, dummy spits while driving. Keegan says only one quarter of adults are independent thinkers, and we need more. So how can we do this? Well, the OECD suggests that there are three basic skills we all need to master to live well in the 21st century. Skillfully use technology. Understand its potential to serve humanity and to harm it. Gauge empathetically with others from different backgrounds to build respectful relationships. Act autonomously. Identify your values, the self you want to be, and take responsibility for your actions, thinking as a global citizen. That sounds great, but how do we put this into practice? Well, here are some ideas that I have. Model responsibility and respect. Kids don't get that online is public, permanent, 
and potentially harmful. And I can't see Facebook installing a narcissism detector anytime soon. So we have to lead by example. Pause before you post. Question your intent. Instead of spewing out your every thought, keep some in Goffman's backstage relaxation space. The digital village has enough idiots. <laughs> Stop sleeping with your phone. <laughs> A codependent relationship with your smartphone is dumb. Don't fall for this latest anxiety, the fear of missing out. There was life before Facebook. Rediscover it. Get some balance. Look beyond the me in social media. Help others. Every day, send one kind message. Join a cause you believe in. The social change movement, Stop Acid Attacks, which protests against atrocious violence against women, has 23,000 followers. Yet the self-confessed dope you saw at the start who photographs the backside has 3.7 million. For changing what? Her pants? I wonder what a movement of 3.7 million could achieve in stopping acid attacks. Social media, you see, is creating opportunities that, we didn't, that didn't exist yesterday. I was in Kenya last year, working in the slums of Nairobi, where people live in disgusting conditions. Yet seven in 10 have a mobile phone. The internet is really cheap and they're using it to share valuable information. They're mapping water access points so that they can improve sanitation. They're pinpointing crime hotspots so that street lamps can be installed to reduce the incidence of rape and assault. Imagine you could change something using social media. What would it be? Picture something in your mind that you care passionately about. And over the next few weeks, work out how to give it life. My takeout today is this. We can use the global network of social media to focus on me, think bananas, blisters, and butt selfies. Or we can choose to see our connection to all humanity as a gift and use this digital space to enrich the world, not just for me, but also for we. Thank you.